All right, so I'm going to start off this lecture by talking about what an enzyme is. Okay, so when we talk about enzymes, what we're actually talking about are protein catalysts. up chemical reactions and they do this by lowering activation energy okay. activation energy is the minimum amount of energy that is required for a reaction to proceed. Okay. So, these reactions can still happen if the enzyme is not present, but the enzyme actually speeds the whole thing up because it lowers the amount of energy we need for the reaction to progress. Okay. So, thinking about today's lab, or this lab, um, the enzyme that you used was lactase. So, lactase that is going to be the enzyme. And typically, you can recognize enzymes. Not all enzymes will be named this way, but many enzymes end in ASE. So if you see ASE at the end of a word in biology, you should immediately be thinking enzyme. Okay? And of course, all enzymes have a particular molecule that they um, bind to um, that's involved in this chemical reaction. And that particular molecule is called the substrate. So the substrate is the molecule to which the enzyme binds. Okay, and the substrate for our particular exercise was lactose. Okay, now before I go too far, I actually want to give you some basic ideas of enzymatic kinetics. Um, and then we'll actually start talking about what we expect to see in our results, um, as well as what lactose is actually metabolized into. Okay, so let's first start off with enzymatic kinetics. Okay, so enzyme kinetics 101, basically you have an enzyme, and you have a molecule to which that enzyme binds that's called the substrate. Notice that I've drawn the substrate so it seems to fit neatly with this portion of the enzyme. This portion or region of the enzyme where substrate binding occurs is called the active site. Okay, so that is the active site of the enzyme, and that's where substrate binding will occur. So what happens is, in a biological context, the enzyme and substrate have interactions between the substrate and the active site of the enzyme, and they form what's known as the enzyme-substrate complex. So basically the way you can think of it is, substrate fits neatly into that active site. Now there's not 100% match, but it's close enough to where there is a very, very strong affinity, this active site, for this substrate. And the other thing you need to realize is that the active site is actually very, very flexible. So what that means is that as it binds to the substrate, it still has the potential to change shape, thereby destabilizing the substrate and forcing the reaction towards the product side. Okay? So this active site is going to change shape as this binding occurs. And in doing so, it's going to cause the bonds that exist within the substrate to destabilize. And that's going to further force the substrate towards the direction of products. Eventually, the changes to the substrate are so great that the reaction proceeds, we yield products, and the active site is not specific for those products. It can no longer really bind to those products. So those products, which I'll just draw, here, as this, are released, and the active site being flexible goes back to the original way that it was. Okay? So this is enzyme kinetics 101. Um, this is explained in much greater detail in your lecture text, so I would highly re recommend that you read that and actually look at the graph that shows you the activation energy uh, between 
a reaction that has an enzyme and a reaction that does not have an enzyme. All right, so now that we've gone over the basic idea of what's happening here, let's talk about the specific reaction that we're going to be looking at in this particular lab. Okay, so remember again, our enzyme is lactase, and our substrate is lactose. Okay, lactose of course is a sugar that's found in milk, it's a disaccharide. And its metabolism in the body is such that it will be metabolized into two products. One is called galactose, and the other, of course, we've seen before, it's called glucose. So what we want to look at is how fast does this reaction take place? Okay? So ideally what we would do is we would look at this and say, okay, well, how can we measure the speed at which this reaction occurs and compare different reactions in terms of their activity of lactase? Okay. So what we want to know is how well does this enzyme speed up this reaction in different contexts? And what factors have an effect on the ability of this enzyme to speed up this reaction? Okay, so we've got three different things we could potentially measure to correlate them to enzymatic activity. That is the enzymatic activity of lactase. Okay. We can look at the amount of lactose. So we can measure the total amount of lactose at the beginning and then the total amount of lactose at the end over a certain period of time. And that would tell us how fast lactose is being metabolized. But we haven't really done anything in lab before that will allow us to measure lactose. We probably could do it, but we haven't done it before. Okay. Same thing with galactose. We could measure the amount of galactose at the beginning, ideally it would be zero, and then we could measure the amount of galactose at the end, and that would tell us over a certain period of time how much galactose was produced. But again, we haven't done anything with galactose before. So what we actually wound up doing was we had glucose test strips. Okay? These were those small test strips that you dipped into your Eppendorf tubes, and you pulled them out after dipping them in for one second and let them sit on your bench top for 30 seconds to a minute. Monday classes, you did a minute. Um, every class other than Monday, you did 30 seconds. And after that time period, that particular strip would change color. Depending upon what color it changed, that told you how much glucose was in that solution. Okay? So we are measuring glucose to directly correlate it to how well lactase is working. In other words, if lactase is doing an awesome job and it's speeding up this reaction, we expect to see really, really high levels of glucose. So that's if lactase is working very, very well. So, so lactase activity is high, and we expect to see high levels of glucose. In the event that lactase activity would be low, then we would expect to see much lower levels of glucose. Okay, so the reason why we're measuring glucose, and I know this was a confusing idea for a lot of students, is because the rate at which this reaction occurs and produces this product tells us how well this enzyme is affecting the reaction. Remember, this reaction would occur without lactase, but at a much, much, much slower rate, and it would require a greater deal of energy. Okay? So the presence of lactase will speed this reaction up. So what you need to remember is as you're going through the different experiments, anywhere you see lactase acting, or I guess glucose levels lower, that means that lactase activity is most likely low, either due to the fact that the kinetic energy is low or for other various reasons that would result in a reduction in lactase activity. So glucose, we're correlating to lactase activity. Okay? This ends the introductory part of this lecture. The next lecture in this series 
will be over the optimal temperature and pH exercises that we did for this particular lab.